Welcome to Three Questions With, a podcast by the Latino News Network, produced in collaboration with Can TV. LNN is dedicated to best serving Hispanic Latinos with local multimedia news and information websites in the Northeast and the Midwest that include Illinois Latino News, a statewide community focused initiative. Three Questions With is a public affairs program elevating the voices and visibility of matters most important to the Hispanic Latino community by speaking with community and industry thought leaders on the social determinants of health and democracy. I'm Hugo Barta, publisher of LNN and your host. Chicago was once the industrial powerhouse of the Midwest. The south side of Chicago in particular saw an outburst of steel production during World War II that at one point accounted for 20% of all steel made in the U.S. But steel production in the 50s and 60s declined and many factories were abandoned, leaving behind harm to the land and its residents. Promises by the government to clean up contaminated and vacant properties have been slow to materialize, leaving the community to come up with its own solutions. Organizations like the Urban Growers Collective are spearheading such efforts to make green spaces more just and equitable in areas that have been historically divested. Darian Crawford is an urban farmer and compost coordinator with the Urban Growers Collective. DC, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So let's start with the Urban Growers Collective Initiative and working closely with community partners and supporting communities and developing systems of their own where food is grown, prepared, and distributed by the community. Tell us about the work of UGC. We aim to... uh kind of put nutrient-dense foods in, you know, communities of color. Um, kind of simply put, we we, we want to give communities of color access to nutrient-dense food. Um, and we do that a, a lot of, a ton of ways, um, through volunteer opportunities, uh, internships, um, employment, uh, workshops, hands-on training, and so just a lot of different ways that we kind of do that. So we like to, you know, really engage our communities, uh, the communities that we work in there. We like to engage them through that entire process. So from making the compost to transplanting to seeding to bed prep to hoop house to construction to uh, mushroom production, processing, post-harvesting, um, just a lot of different ways that we really work to like engage the communities. We got um, a few different sites over the south and west sides of Chicago. We got um, community, couple community garden sites um, where we offer hands-on training with them too. Um, we do host workshops for them and just get them prepared to, you know, grow in their space and give them a space to come and grow for folks that, you know, may not have the space to grow at home. We talked a little bit before the the show started, and, and we'll dive a little bit more deeper later on when we talk about you and the work that you do. What, uh, As someone who was introduced to urban farming in school, and you know you had an aha moment that we'll talk about in a moment, what are, what are the, some of the things that, that people, beginning with young people, when they volunteer or do internships, with UGC, what are some of the things that they're surprised about in, in working in urban farming that they didn't know about beforehand? It's a lot of aha and oohs, and especially, uh, oh, and that was one, that was another thing I didn't even, you know, forgot to mention was our youth core programs. Um, and that's kind of sense, so that's why I started it was in the youth core program. So a, a, a lot just, just, um, just watching food break down and become compost that you grow in again, like, that blows people's mind if they, you know, don't have the experience with it. And, and it's familiar for me because that's, that's how I felt when I saw it. I was like, that's what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, see your food that, you know, your food scraps break back down and then you grow that food right out of that again. Uh, so that's, 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 that's been kind of one of the things uh, that, I, that, that I've seen. And then just, uh, honestly, you know, the, the amount of work that, that goes into it is, is con- seems to surprise people a lot. We don't think about where our food comes from, right? You you grew up in the city and you you know you you go grocery shopping, that's where the food comes from, right? That's where you get your eggs and your vegetables and your meat and and but you don't you don't start to think about, well, wait, wait a minute. Somebody grew the, these fruits and vegetables. Um the chicken that we're eating and and so on and forth. 
are, are coming from farms. And it isn't until, you know, one of the things that I like about organizations like like the Urban Growers Collective is that it brings the community together, it's educational, and it and it really gives you a moment to really think about what you're putting into your body where, you know, often, especially in our country, there's so many problems with obesity and and processed food that just having a moment, however brief, even if it's just for a semester, to really think about where your food comes from could be transformational. And I think, you know, we talked about how it's not about one or the other, you know, it's about a, a balance and equilibrium, but, you know, share about share with us a little bit about understanding the importance of what you put into your body. It, 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 it's important because it, it just gives you like that, it just kind of gives you a different scope on, you know, what you're eating and, you know, what goes into um, the process that's, you know, getting food thousand miles away. It, 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 it just, it, you know, when you, when you see, you know, the different things that they got to do to kind of preserve these, just in transportation and like all that kind of stuff, it growing it, you, you see you get this right away. Um, and it's just the almost uh, immediate difference in taste. Like that's one of the first things you notice. It's just, it's it's, it's a different in taste. Um, and it's more flavorful. Like you get locally grown food, food that you grow yourself, you just gonna have a little bit more flavor, a lot more flavor. <laughs> um, that's, 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 uh, and, and that's, that's what our communities are. You know, we flavor, so, yeah, that's right. you know, we, we flavor, so, but that's 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 nutrients, you know what I mean? That's that's the nutrient that you taste it, and um, just being a, just, just something as simple as that, like just a tomato from wherever versus a tomato two blocks down from the crib, and just the difference in taste. Like I wait for the tomato seeds. That's my favorite crop, by the way. But uh, um, just just that alone, like, is enough for me. Like just that difference in taste and how um, you're not you know you're not using as much sometimes because you got enough flavor and a smaller amount with, you know, with, with, without all the, um, you know, the in-between process that happens. Sure. Flavorful and, and, and more nutritious. Now let's talk about the, the work that you do. You're an urban farmer and compost coordinator for Urban Growers Collective. What's a compost coordinator? Tell us a little bit for someone who's not familiar with that. What is that? Like my uh my uh my daughter tell me uh, I play in dirt. <laughs> That's my job. No, nah, so it, it, it's I'm um I'm responsible for um you know making sure one I like to keep things real simple. We just do real simple old school composting. Uh, just just uh, but we do it in a real uh, we do it in a way that you know kind of suits urban spaces. So it's like certain things that we can't put into our composting systems when we're working in like urban spaces um, where you could if you had, you know, you didn't have neighbors, right? You know, we don't want to attract rodents or pest anything like that. So, you know, it's kind of managing the compost in a way that is educational, um, kind of respects the communities that we're in and um, is nutrient dense. Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to grow some food. Um, you know, we grow in smaller spaces, you know, like um, we, 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 we make 11 acres pump, like <laughs> we make 11 acres pump. It's just, it's, we, we, we grow in smaller spaces. We got to grow real dense. So, you know, crops get closer, um, but our yields are still high. We still producing at a, you know, a higher rate. And, and we, and just in urban spaces, you know, you kind of got to work with what you got in this you know, we look around and we see like, oh, we got all these, you know, it's a lot of lots and, and space that we can use to grow. But um, we and we still all kind of got like, you know, other like day to day lives that we live, like just living in the urban. So, you know, we got to we and it starts with that compost. It starts with being able to grow nutrient dense food and in and, and a smaller amount of space. Um, so I guess kind of in a nutshell, that's that probably wasn't a nutshell, but <laughs> <laughs> That's what that's what we do. That's what I do. I just um I build fertility on the farm. You you mentioned space a couple of times. Um, the 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 public, the members of the in, in the neighborhood that come and work with you and and uh, and UGC. Now, if I if I remember correctly, there there are plots that that if I don't have the space, 
where I live, maybe, you know, I, I, I live in a home and maybe I could do it in my backyard, but some folks live in apartments, right? You don't have that same amount of space. Is there an opportunity to grow your own food in lots um, that are provided by UG, UGC? Um, no, nah, and I wouldn't say not, not in four lots. Um, okay. we, we, we mostly do, you know, just kind of smaller plots. Um, cause our community gardens are shared with our farm spaces, with our production spaces. It's a, it's kind of a shared space in a way. So it's on the same, it's kind of usually on the same lot. So, um, it's usually just kind of providing that smaller space. Okay. Got it. more individual spaces there. Wanted to move on to the second question. You are a member of the Multicultural Leadership Academy that's sponsored by the Latino Policy Forum. MLA, his goal is to provide diverse group of civic leaders like yourself um, with the leaders and skills needed to collaborate uh, between Latino and black members of the, of the community, uh, intercultural collaboration and social action. Tell us about the experience of being the, uh, a cohort in the 2023 class. One thing about like the farm spaces is that um, this is a safe space. We 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 develop these farms to kind of put more safe spaces um, in the city, right? So being part of the MLA, um, you know, that's another you know that's another safe space, right? I want to say you just meet a group of folks that you ain't, you ain't never met before. I don't, I I didn't know these people. <laughs> I didn't know them, and uh, but because that's because we came together with the understanding that you know this here is a safe space, um, and we you know just being allowed to be vulnerable and allowed to be heard and 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 listen to, um, it just felt uh, I guess I, you know just kind of natural, like uh, it it really supported the work that I'm doing in a way, um, but it also feels good to know that, you know, just kind of had that reinforcement that, like, it's people in Chicago, just, mm-hmm. you know, working, you know, just as hard and, and, and doing so much of the same similar work in, in their own way. They're doing different things, but it's, it, you know, it's all the same work and, and, and healing our communities and healing ourselves, um, you know, most importantly. So that's 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 kind of been, you know, my experience with the MLA and it, it, it kind of gives you just a space where you can, you know, like really, you know, evaluate the things that you're doing. And that's really important, right? You, you, you've mentioned a couple of things that really resonate with me. One, creating safe spaces um, and being vulnerable. Because a lot of times um, it's hard to find those safe spaces to, to, to be able to speak your truth. And all of us, you know, s- struggle with being authentic in the, in the, in a, in 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 a, an arena where we're with people who are who we don't know who come from different walks of life so creating a safe space that build bridges between different people and then realize hey wait a minute you know you're doing it with urban farming another person might be doing it as a educator or maybe working uh, in healthcare but you're all working towards the same thing in, in regards to building up the community. I think that that's really important. Um, is there any is there anything that you could share in in some of the meetings that you've had at MLA that you're like um, either where you saw a connection because it was a projection of what you're doing in farming and they're doing somewhere else, or just something that kind of opened your mind in regards to the opportunities to to coalition build, especially between um, the Latino community and black community. And all this different, you know, all these different efforts being made by um, all these different folks from all these different black and brown backgrounds around the city. You know what I mean? Uh, You know, and and just kind of being able to hear their lived experiences and and their stories and they share that. And then they share, you know, why they passionate about the work that they do, and, and and I share the same, you know, why I'm passionate about, you know, the work that I do, and we, you know, it all comes back to like, you know, we just all want to play our role in building strong communities and building healthier communities and building, uh, just just just, just kind of just 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 supporting ourselves in our communities, and we get that we 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 kind of get that chance to see, you know, that 
we all pretty much doing the same thing in a, in a, in a sense. And um, we, we, we all doing work that supports work. And it's, and it's so different. Like some of the work that's, some of the things that people do, um, you know, how would I put this? Just kind of looking at it, if you know, without with the book, you know, just kind of not knowing it, anything about it. You just hear, okay, okay, well, you got a job, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, that's a that's a good job. It sounds like a good job. And then it, this just kind of, you know, me thinking about um, some of the ways that I was feeling. And then the more I listened, I was like, oh no, that's a little bit more. Excuse me. Uh, that's a little bit more than just you know a job like that's that's they supporting the community and and I didn't I didn't really you know what I'm saying like see it that way um, so it's for me it kind of helped me kind of get outside of you know my farming background my urban farming background and my composting space and like just really see like all these other efforts and just really see like all this support that you know we all got and um, just just how dedicated. <laughs> so many people are on so many different levels yeah. to it, to support in our communities. And and, and it's also, um, we realize that we have a lot more in common than the things that perhaps um, we thought separate us. DC, we're, we're talking to DC Urban Farmer and Compost Coordinator with the Urban Growers Collective. Up next, DC is going to get a little personal with us. He's going to talk to us about the experience, the lived experiences, as he shared with us, that help shape the work that he's leading now in Irving Farming. Racial discrimination and bias have been ingrained in our criminal, legal, and law enforcement systems from its earliest days, and they continue to pervade every level of our systems today. This week on Change Agents, I'm joined by two incredible leaders who are working hard to improve our criminal justice system. Join me at 7.30 p.m. this Thursday on CAN-TV 19. Stream us on CANTV.org or download and watch on the CAN-TV Plus app. We've been talking to DC, urban farmer and compost coordinator with the Urban Growers Collective. We've talked about uh, how organizations like UGC are making green spaces more just and equitable. We've also talked about the Latino Policy Forum's Multicultural Leadership Academy and how that program is building coalitions between Latino and black communities. But now we're gonna talk about you. Off camera, we were talking about that aha moment that you had in regards to urban farming. And I'd love for you to share with, with our audience that, you know, that story about how you came to uh, learn about urban farming and then how that kind of um, redirect it, you know, the, you, your life personally and professionally. I went to John Marshall High School and my uh, high school teacher was, uh, we called her buddy, her name's Carol Williams. <laughs> um, so she, you know, she was real active with us. She, she exposed us to, you know, agriculture, the agriculture world. It was a horticulture program, but she really exposed us to like more full-blown agriculture. We had a um, urban farm in, in the back of the school. Uh, I believe it's still there. It's been a while. Um, so we had an urban farm in the back of the school and, and, and I, and I, and, and I just liked it cause you know, I won growing food. Um, it's not so bad. Like even when I was young, you know, we sit in the school building, high school building all day. So it was cool. I just want to go outside. <laughs> so it was an opportunity to kind of get outside to, um, grow the food. And then, um, you know, we would sell it. Um, we would, we would, we would sell it after school, go to market. And then that, that, the money actually, you know, we saw it come right back to us. We saw we saw it being used for our programs. We saw it being used to um, give us scholarships to college and stuff like that. So that was one thing that was real cool. Um, but she gave us these after school matter options. And it was at the, at the time Urban Girls Collective was Growing Power Chicago. And um, our co-founders of Urban Girls uh, came to the school and, you know, just kind of, you know, gave us their spiel like, you know, hey, we we doing agriculture, we got some farm downtown, and we gonna pay y'all. <laughs> so I was interested, you know, that, that kind of got me something to do after school, and I'm gonna get paid, and it's work that I'm already doing, I kind of, I'm, you know, I'm kind of familiar with, so, uh, yeah, I went and did that, and I enjoyed it. It was a little different than what we were doing in classroom. It was the exact same in a way, like what we was just kind of growing food, but it was different, um, because uh, they, they, in the curriculum, 
it was built in like the art part of it. Um, so if downtown across the street from Buckingham Fountain, we got art on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so at the school, we were just doing like more crops. It was just, you know, we had this bed of peppers, this bed of tomatoes, this bed of collards. But at the farm, at the, at the art of the farm, it, it was spirals and colors flowing all over the place. And <laughs> it's tall stuff, short stuff. And I just remembered uh, just the 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 the, the pride. I, the, 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 that, that was when I saw pictures of it. And then we went and put in all that work <laughs> and came back in the summer. I was part of the Growing Power's first youth corps. And uh, we came back in the summer and, I'm, and I saw it, you know, and it's across the street from the Buckingham Fountain. It's one of my favorite places in the city when I was younger. And uh, so I just stopped by and, you know, check it out. And you can you just see like all this work we did and, and, and how, you know, we growing multiple crops in one bed and this going in the middle, this on the side, these on the edges, using up all the space. And, and that was the part that at the time I didn't get. I just saw the colors in the food. Um, but like when I was saying, you know, how nutrient dense we got to be, I'm like, so we still doing all that <laughs> while creating art. Um, and then that was my introduction to like herbs and stuff like that. Just seeing herbs grow on the farm and like edible flowers and nasturtiums and stuff and just tasting those. And, and it just it just kind of expanded my farm and my urban farming world working at that farm at the time. And it was hard work. <laughs> It was hard work. It was sweaty work, uh, and I wasn't scared. Of, I, I wasn't scared of like the you know the hard work part. You know, it, I, I I appreciated physical challenges, uh, but it was it was rewarding. It was like I I never like working there was like um, you. I had this experience where like I would uh, when I was younger I would like cut grass and shovel snow, and when I'm done doing that for and I get paid, but when I was done. It was bedtime, I'm tired. But I go and do all that work uh, on the farms, and even still, I do all this work on the farms, and then I get off, and it's like energy. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, I got, I got new energy after doing all that work. And I was like, oh yeah, this cool. So it's cool to see all that art on the farm, grow all that food, set up a market in the um, downtown, giving tours and doing. Just all this cool stuff right across the street from one of my favorite places in the city at the time, Buckingham Fountain. So then I get to make that trip too. So that was that was just real cool when I was in that youth corps program. DC urban farmer compost coordinator with the Urban Growers Collective and artist. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You've been watching three questions with DC urban farmer and compost coordinator with the Urban Growers Collective. When we come back, la última palabra, the last word on Black and Latino coalitions. Hi, I'm Ryan G. I'm the host of Tweenish. This week on Tweenish, we'll be talking about mental health with a special guest, Miss Sylvia. What can tweens do to have good mental health? Really having a good support system of adults that you can bounce ideas off of. You can watch my show Friday nights, 7 o'clock, on CanTV19, CanTV.org, and the new CanTV Plus app. And now, la última palabra, my final thoughts on Black and Latinos working together. Latinos share many of the same experiences of exclusion, disadvantage, and barriers to opportunity as the black community. Historically, black and Latino coalitions have been organized to elect black and Latino leaders to combat school segregation, police brutality, gentrification, environmental racism, and other social injustices. These alliances have often been temporary though, mobilized to address specific grievances and then fading out when success is achieved or enthusiasm is lost. As such, the task for those interested in ongoing Black and Latino dialogue is to identify barriers to lasting collaboration and find ways to overcome them so that both groups are able to develop effective working relationships that empower them to have greater political influence in the policy directions of the state and the operation of its institutions. 
Latinos and Blacks represent the two largest ethno-racial minority groups in Chicago, the state and in the nation. Working collaboratively, these two populations could wield significantly more political power and influence, but a number of barriers exist that prevent that from occurring. Most importantly, these two groups are often pitted against each other in competition for scarce resources, perpetuating needless divisions in order to maintain the existing power structure. The current political climate across the nation and in our state highlights the need for increased understanding and collaboration between these two groups, especially as we march towards the 2024 general election. But before team building can begin in earnest, Many thought leaders say both groups need to begin a healing process that starts with truth-telling, accountability, and forgiveness. Research shows that many members of the Black community believe that Latino immigration threatens their social, political, and economic standing, and worry that immigration issues will supersede their ongoing struggle for civil rights. Latinos, on the other hand, often hold multiple negative stereotypes of black people, including stereotypes about criminality, intelligence, trustworthiness, and work ethic. Before long-lasting coalitions can be forged, scholars suggest examining black-Latino relations in terms of stereotypes and attitudes they hold toward each other. Black and Latino are better together, but in order to move forward side by side, both groups must first address the distance between them and recognize the commonalities of their histories in the face of the policies and practices of this country's systems of racism. We must move beyond temporary coalitions and alliances for sustainable collaborative relations that reconfigure intergroup power relations in pursuit of a more inclusive, equitable, and just social order. Well, that does it for this edition of Three Questions With a collaboration by Illinois Latino News and Can TV. I invite you to look us up on our websites and chat with us via social media. Tell us what you think about the topics we talked about today, and please send me suggestions about what you think we should talk about in the future. Because at the Latino News Network, you're more than just our audience. You are our contributors. Amugo Balta, thank you all for listening.